do you wish you were the color you were again? Do I wish I was the that color? That's nature that. I loved, I love but black. I love black. Do you wish you were that way? I envy her because she can tan and I can't. Why are you wearing a silk mask in your latest appearances? Because uh, with time, my skin condition has gotten worse. I hate to say it. I have vitiligo and uh, I'm alert, totally, completely allergic to the sun. I'm not even supposed to be outside, actually. Even if I'm in the shade, the sun rays can destroy my skin. Vitiligo is a medical condition that Jackson claims has afflicted him for more than 20 years. This disfiguring skin disease affects nearly 2% of the world's population and strips all pigmentation from the skin. The result is not just pale, but porcelain white. Vitiligo and not a contagious disease. The psychological implication of the vitiligo patients can be complex. Sometimes the onset of the disorder is followed by sense of loneliness and depression. One of the most famous examples of person with vitiligo is Lee Thomas, a Fox 2 broadcaster who told his story on this ABC interview. This is my face without makeup. I have a disease called vitiligo. His single white glove became more than a fashion statement for Lee, who tried to hide his changing skin. One glove he used to wear, I used to wear one glove to cover it. So, I mean, I, I understand. Uh, all of his struggles. He's also a man who's that. been a black man who's been very criticized for turning himself into a white man, whether he did it or not. The surgeries, the, 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 the whole thing. And I can't, I can't speak for that. But the, at least the vitiligo part of Michael Jackson, it's, it's real. I want people to know that it's real, and it's really difficult to deal with. Um, it's, an, it's like an emotional battlefield to deal with the reaction of people. Vitiligo started on Michael Jackson's body around 1982, during the Thriller album recording, when a small white patch appeared on his stomach. With the passing of the years, that small white patch became larger and other light spots started spreading all over his body. His brother recalls, I had suspected something was going on as early as 1984 and victory, because he started to cover up all the time. His day wear and show costumes on Victory revealed as little skin as possible, round neck vests, high buttoned shirts and sleeves that showed only a hint of wrist. I suspected something, but really have no idea how serious his vitiligo was getting. By 1990, the family was aware of Michael's condition and how distressing it was for him. Michael had revealed to the public that he had vitiligo, but his words fell on deaf ears. It would take his death for some people to believe him. Michael Jackson autopsy report confirmed that he indeed suffered from vitiligo. The autopsy report on Michael Jackson's body revealed. Sections of skin, slide you, show no melanocytic pigment. Melanocytics, although present, are reduced in number. No melanocytic pigment means there was no pigmentation, no coloration, melanocytics being present means the cells were there, but were non-functioning, not producing color. In February 1993, during an exclusive interview with Oprah Winfrey, in an effort to quell rumors that he was bleaching his skin, Michael revealed to us that he was suffering from vitiligo. The thing that is most discussed about you, I think, is the fact that the color of your skin is obviously different than it was when you were younger. Yes. And so I think uh, it has caused a great deal of speculation and controversy as to what you have done or are doing, are you bleaching your skin, and have, are, is your skin lighter because you don't like being black? Okay, number one, there, as I know of, mm -hmm. there is no such thing as skin bleaching. Mm -hmm. I have never seen it, I don't know what well, it is. Well, they used to have those products growing up, I used to hear, always use bleach and glow, but you'd have okay. to have about 300,000 right. gallons. To okay, number th one, this is the situation. Yes. I have a skin disorder that destroys the pigmentation of the skin. It's something that I cannot help. Okay, but when people make up stories that I don't want to be who I am, it hurts me. So it is 
it's a problem for me, okay? I can't control it, mm -hmm. okay? But what about all the millions of people? Let's reverse it. Okay. What about all the millions of people who sit out in the sun mm -hmm. to become darker, to become other than what they are? Mm -hmm. Nobody says nothing about that. So when did this start? When did your, the color of your skin start to change? Oh boy, I don't, sometime after Thriller. Mm -hmm. around off the wall thriller sometime and what did you that. think I mean you it's in my family my father said is on his side I can't control it I don't understand I mean it makes me very sad I don't want to go into my medical history because mm -hmm. that's something that's private but mm -hmm. that's the situation here so mm -hmm. please when people see so, something okay. like I that, just want to get this straight yeah. you are not taking anything to change the color of your skin oh, God no you did not purposely We're trying to control it and using makeup mm -hmm. evens it out because it makes blotches on the skin and I have to even out my skin these indispensable cosmetics and his heavier use of makeup was a necessary mask for him. Michael was a public figure and he was very image conscious of his vitiligo. Throughout the years, his makeup artist used foundation cream to cover his blotches due to the progressive and increasingly extensive depigmentation. His longtime makeup artist, Karen Fay, explained in a 2003 interview. In the beginnings, the vitiligo happened, had started happening relatively early. You know, he, he even was trying to hide it from me. He tried to hide it for quite a while. You know, he'd always try to cover with makeup and even out his skin tone and everything until it just got so extensive. I mean, it's all over his body. We were always trying to hide it and cover it for the longest time until he just had to tell Oprah and tell the world, listen, I'm, I'm not trying to be white. I have a skin disease. The loss of pigment exposes vitiligo sufferers to great risk of skin cancer, requiring constant shade from the sun and thick makeup or sunblock to lessen the exposure. You know, in the beginning, I tried to cover the light spots to the darkest part of his skin, but then it became so extensive that we had to go with the lighter part of the skin because his whole body was reacting. He'd have to be in complete, full body makeup every inch of his body, you know? So it was easier to make the transition to him being to the lighter shade that he is. Michael told us that the progressive depigmentation of his skin was something he could not control. Despite his continuous statements of vitiligo, the media and the public continued to vilify him about his skin color. In 1995, during an interview with Diane Sawyer, the question was raised again. I know it's a sensitive issue for you and you talked with Oprah about it, but somehow people still are not, they don't feel they've heard everything about the whiteness of your skin and that it's not somehow a choice on your part along with the makeup to be is it to be neither black or white neither to look completely male to be in the androgynous zone i, I think they want to know it is a decision on your part some way the way you look where does it come from i think it creates itself nature Because I just can't